Hey guys, Miss Marie Seek here, and in this video we're going to be talking about Graham's Law, which relates the molar mass of a particular gas to the speed at which its particles would be moving at a particular temperature. Now you got a little preview to this in our last video about Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves, specifically the last curve that we looked at. So I'm actually going to put that picture back up here for just a moment. Um, on this image, we had noble gases that were all at the same temperature conditions at 100 degrees Celsius. And what we noted about this graph is that our heaviest molecule, the xenon that had the largest molar mass, um, its particles actually had the slowest overall speed. And on the flip side, helium, which was the lightest particle, it had the smallest molar mass, had the fastest particle speed out of these noble gases. And so we wrote a conclusion um, on those notes. We put, hey, as molar mass increases, as we get a larger molecule size, the speed of the molecules decreases. And without knowing it, what you actually wrote here is what Graham's Law states, that as long as I have two different gases at the same temperature, the gas with the greater molar mass will be traveling at a slower speed than the gas with the smaller molar mass. Now, the reason why this relationship works has to do with the formula of kinetic energy equaling one half mv squared, which is mass and velocity here, velocity being the speed of our gas particles. So if I have two gases that are at the same temperature, what that means is that our kinetic energies of both of those samples are the same. And so in order to keep this the same, if I increase the mass, then the velocity would have to decrease. Now they are related by a square root relationship and we can see that because obviously we have this square here. Um, but you don't need to be able to calculate with this. You would really just need to be able to describe this relationship. Um, so to kind of give us an idea of how this works kind of in a real life situation, if I asked you to run a particular distance, um, you could probably do so fairly quickly. And so then if I ask you to run that same distance, but I asked you to wear, say, a heavy backpack with a whole bunch of textbooks and stuff in it, you're going to be running a lot slower with that heavy backpack on, even though you're probably exerting the same amount of energy as you did when you ran more quickly. And so then we want to think about the time it would take you to run that particular distance. If I'm a bigger molecule, a more heavy molecule, and I'm moving a lot slower, then I'm gonna take more time to get somewhere than if I'm a smaller particle, say without that heavy backpack, and I can run a lot faster, I'm gonna take less time to do that same distance. Even though in both of these situations, I might be utilizing the exact same amount of kinetic energy. So again, to kind of conclude here, as molar mass increases, the rate or the speed of the molecule decreases, but what that would mean is that your travel time would increase. Now, this affects two different um, gas situations that we can have, diffusion and effusion. Um, diffusion is when gases mix together. So like, for example, if I spray some air freshener on one side of the room, the time it takes for that air freshener to mix with the rest of the air and for you to be able to smell it on the other side of the room. That mixing of that air freshener would be diffusion. Effusion is gas escaping through a small hole. Now I know it says here typically into a vacuum, but really it would just need to be into an area of lower pressure. So like, let's say for example, I had a tire that got a hole in it. Effusion would be the gas escaping out of that hole in the tire. Both of these properties are affected by Graham's Law. The time it takes for diffusion and effusion to take place would be dependent on what size of gas particles I'm dealing with. So for example here on diffusion, if I have bigger gas molecules that are moving slower, the time it takes for these gases to mix is going to be increased because they're moving a lot slower. Same thing with effusion here. If I'm trying to get this gas to escape out of this 
this pinhole here. Um, if the gases are heavier and moving slower, they're going to take a lot more time to move and escape because those molecules are moving more slowly. So these two properties are greatly affected by Graham's law itself. So let's look at some examples that you might be asked um, if you're trying to use Graham's law as a justification. So this first example here says it took 4.5 minutes for one liter of nitrogen gas to effuse through a porous barrier. Would you expect a one liter of methane gas to take more or less time if the conditions are the same? Now the reason why they mentioned the conditions being the same is that would indicate that temperature is the same, so kinetic energy should be consistent for these two gases. So what that means is that my big difference here is going to be my molar mass. So for nitrogen N2, since each nitrogen is is about 14 grams per mole each, that would have a molar mass of around 28 grams per mole. On the other hand, methane um, is CH4, for those of y'all that were not familiar with that. Carbon is about 12, each hydrogen is about one gram per mole, and so that gives me a molar mass roughly about 16 grams per mole. And so if I want to compare the methane to the nitrogen gas, I would say, well, hey, methane has a lower molar mass in comparison to N2. If it has a lower molar mass, if I'm dealing with a smaller mass of molecule, then what that means is that it is going to move faster. Its velocity would be increased. And so if it's moving faster, then what that would mean is that it would take less time to escape out of that pinhole. It would take less time to do an effusion process as well as to do a diffusion process depending on what the question asked. So again, molar mass makes all the difference with these. All right, we've got one last question here. It says that the rate of effusion of a particular gas was measured and found to be 24 milliliters per minute. So what they're giving me here is a rate at which effusion was taking place. Under the same conditions, the rate of effusion of pure methane is 47.8 milliliters per minute. Would you expect the molar mass of the unknown gas to be larger or smaller than that of methane? So I'm going to actually kind of rewrite my information here for a minute. Uh, they told me that the unknown is effusing at 24 milliliters per minute. They told me that the methane, which is again CH4, is at 47.8 milliliters per minute. And again, we're going to assume that these are at the same conditions, so they're at the same temperature, so kinetic energy on these would be the same. So it wants to know, hey, would this molar mass of our unknown be larger or smaller? Well, look at the rate. The rate value is slower than that of methane. So if I have a slower rate, then that means my molecule is moving slower. So think about when you would move slower at the same kinetic energy. You would move slower if your molecule is heavier. And so what that means is that it must have an increased molar mass in comparison to the methane. All right, hopefully we're feeling good about understanding Graham's law and we would be able to compare molar masses and rates and speeds to figure out the timing of diffusion and effusion for two different gases. All right, if you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye guys.